is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Um, I am here, Big O. There you are. I am here, Big O. There I am. Yeah. For, after after three years of trying to do this, I finally found a hotel without internet that works. So at least it's not you out here for one of your events trying to get the internet to work in Vegas. Well, we'll see next. Uh, no, in about two weeks, I'll be in Canton. We'll see if uh, if uh, we can do the whole show from uh, from our hotel in Canton. That'll be that'll be interesting, but uh, we've been we've been we've been lucky lucky that we've been able to pull it off pretty much every single time. All right, let's uh, let's get going here, Ira. So, how long will this waiting game take? Will this go into August? Uh, this trade. You know what? It could be go because again, there's not a real game to be played until October. On the other hand, a real team wants to get their work done and out of the way. The Heat are operating professionally through this. Here, we're at the table. This is what we have. Let's negotiate. The Blazers are negotiating from a standpoint of we want everything. And and I just don't think the Blazers are as familiar with this type of big move as the Miami Heat. Pat Riley has done these types of moves from the sign-in trades from Chris Bosh and LeBron James over the years to acquiring Goran Dragic when he wasn't happy to the multi-team sign and trade for Jimmy Butler. You know, I'm not so sure that the relatively new, when he admits it, Blazers GM Joe Cronin is really familiar with how to play basketball on this level. And I think that has a lot to do with the delay. All right. So that's, that's kind of what I felt like that, you know, this whole process is going to take a while because, Obviously, Joe hasn't been involved in these kind of things. And, you know, it's it's funny how uh, people were at first like, oh, well, he 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 shouldn't dictate where he goes and and that they have they should be able to get whatever they can. And, yeah, that all sounds well and good in in the real world. But unfortunately, we're in the NBA and in the NBA, players have a ton of control. And you know what, Ira? As a, as a guy that has been a former employee of corporations and has worked for bad ones too at times, I I I pull for for not just because of the heat thing. It's because he gets to control his own destiny and he wants to go. He's only got a couple of years left. Well, let me go somewhere where I know they're competent and they know how to do things the right way. And I can't blame him for wanting to join a terrific organization in the Miami Heat. Yeah, I, and again, you know, uh, from Damian Lillard's standpoint, if, if for people who are sort of saying, you know, I, I, again, because there's going to be pushback when Damian Lillard joins a winner, please go back over the last three years where Joe Crone in two years has said, we will do everything possible to get Damian, Damian Lillard a contending team. He has said it over and over and over again. So this is not the petulant player who only wants to win Damian has been patient with that team. They told him before last season, there are quotes out there, there's video out there. They told him at this season's trade deadline, they would get him support. And they told him before the draft, we will get you veteran support. Then they drafted Scoot Henderson, which still might be the right move. But this has been time and time and time again when they failed him. So the outside perspective, Big O, and I'm hearing a lot of this, is this. How dare someone take an extension from a team pocket his $50 million a year, and then push back against the team. And I would say the extension was taken with the word given from management in Portland that they would surround him with championship-level talent. And God bless Scoot Henderson, Shaden Sharp, and Freddie Simons, but that's not what in 2023 now gets you to the championship level. That's why the pushback began from Damian Lillard this is not a guy chasing rings. This is a guy chasing the chance to compete that he feels he's been denied the last three or four seasons. What do we know about uh, where Tyler Hero's head is at, unfortunately? Because obviously he knows he's going to be shipped one way or another somewhere. You know, I, I mean, obviously, I think any player has a sense of pride that how dare you dismiss me. You know, it, it, it's funny. Because I think if you ask, and again, I don't think this is wrong, Tyler Hero, are you better than Damian Lillard? 
he might tell you, hell yeah, because that's the professional athlete approach of believing they're up to any challenge. So from Tyler's standpoint is, what are you talking about? Remember what they did in the bubble in 2020? Remember that 30-plus point game against the Celtics that helped get us to the NBA Finals? I've been there. I can do it. I've just been hurt the last two playoffs. So that's his mentality. You know what? He's a big boy making big money. You get over it. And I do believe this. Yes, away from the court, away from camp and everything else, I'm sure he's very upset. And I can see why, the way his name is out there. But I can tell you, Big O, the mentality in any sport, when the clock starts running and the games start to be played, you are focused and locked in on the moment. So, so many people are saying, well, they can't possibly bring Tyler back. He won't give it his best effort. These guys are professionals. When the games count, these guys are locked into the moment of getting their points, rebounds, assists, and getting their victory. He'll be fine. It'll be very uncomfortable when the games aren't being played. But you know what? That's part of something you have to deal with also. That's the trade-off you make. So, Ira, you went a little Oliver Stone on me here with Jaime Jaquez. You think they're trying to hide him? Uh, You know what? And, again, I've gotten so much from that. I had so much from ESPN at the start of the game the other day. What's going on? Is he really hurt? If you go back to the Tapruda film, if we're going to, to Oliver Stone, you can see in Wednesday's game against the Sacramento Kings, he was sandwiched between two players. He grimaced, he hurt his shoulder. You yeah. do not take subterfuge to the level that you put. You have him do an MRI just to pretend that he's injured. You need Jaime Hawkins Jr. out there now to play, to get used to it. And Big O, here's the example. Last year, Nikola Jovic was terrific in the California Classic in a couple of games, especially the last one in San Francisco. Then he got hurt. He took a knee bruise in the first game against the Celtics here in Las Vegas and wasn't the same player. And I honestly think the missed time in summer league retarded his growth as a rookie. Jaime Hawkins could use these games. The Heat aren't playing games if he's traded, if he might be traded. They want him on the court, but he's injured. And it's a real injury. You, you, you can't get Karan Butler, the summer coach, Jaime Hawkins, the rookie, the team's medical staff, all to wink, wink about this. If the Blazers want Jaime Hawkins in the deal, honestly, Big O, they'll probably get him again. My thought is this, anyone but Bam, Adebayo, and Jimmy Butler are available. But it doesn't mean that everyone is available. It doesn't mean they can get everyone, but at least all these players will be offered. How much do you want? Who do you want? And I think Jaime Hawkins will be in there. Okay, so, but either way, if Hawkins stays or Ojovic stays or Jamal Kane or whoever is here, the thing is, after that trade, What's left will play a lot in in the in the preseason anyway because there's not going to be a, a lot left. So what's left will get playing time. So if Hawkins is, is left over and he some of the time he missed, he, he'll make up for some of it in the preseason because they're going to have to play some of those young guys in the preseason because their roster isn't going to be as full as it is right now. I agree. You know what, Big O? I'm going to actually offer this up to you, and you can discuss it later in the show if you want. To me, there are three trade pods that come together, make a Damian Lillard deal. It's almost like drawing for the World Cup, okay? So in pot number one are Tyler Hero, Kyle Lowry, and Duncan Robinson. For salary purposes, two of those three have to be included. Again, so what Portland wants, what the Heat want. In pot number two are Caleb Martin, Nikola Jovic, and Jaime Hawkins Jr. I believe the Heat would be willing to part with one, would have second thought or at least reserve thought if they had to give up two of them. They're not giving up all three. So again, if you're Portland, between Caleb Martin, Jaime Hawkins, and Nikola Jovic, you're going to get one of them. Portland is saying we want at least two of them. That's the part of it. In pot number three are draft choices. The Heat have a way to maneuver the pick they owe to the Oklahoma City Thunder. So, the Heat can offer one, two, or three first-round draft choices. I think the Heat want to limit it to two. I think the Blazers want three. So, I think that's where we are. Each of those pots that you're drawing at or for a Lillard trade, of course the Blazers want it all. But you know what the Heat are saying, Big O? Show us you have another offer from another team. 
We are not going to bid against ourselves. And I think that's what it is right now. Because Big O, for all the stuff and bluster you've heard of other teams getting involved, there has not been a single tangible trade talk uh, compilation from another team that we've heard about beyond the Miami Heat. And Pat Riley and Andy Ellisberg and Adam Simon and Nick Harrison would be foolish to be bidding against themselves. So they're probably saying, okay, uh, Tyler Hero and Kyle Lowry, boom, pot A, you can have that. From pot B, just take one player. You can't have two. And you know what? We'll start with one draft choice, but because we're such good guys, maybe we'll give you a second first-round pick also. And they're telling the Portland Trailblazers this. Show us a better offer. And Big O, we haven't seen a better offer from anywhere. Yeah, no. And, that, and, and thanks to Lillard's agent, who has just completely you know, put out all those fires. So he he's done his job. So let me ask you a convoluted, twisted, complicated question that could have a lot of layers to it or forget about it. They could have cast it aside and say, you could tell me no way it happens and the repercussions from it impossible. Oh, here we go. Will they, will they want to say, okay, all right, you guys want little, right? Well, now you're going to have to take Yurkic off our off our off our books. So if you want your 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 this big ass salary, you want to get your championship, you now need to take this cumbersome salary off of us. Now, the the good side to all of this, the bad side, of course, is all the taxes that Mickey would have to pay. Okay, fine, but right. the good side of some of this is they won't be able to get as much as they want on the young side. Miami can then Correct. pull back and say, yeah, no, sorry, dude. No, we're not giving you Jokic and, and Yahimit. No, if you want us to take Jokic, well, now we're going to give you a little less because you're making us take a bad salary in its place. So will that be in play? And what could be the positive and negative repercussions of, of, of Jokic coming this way? I have no problem with Yerkes because I kind of like a big bruising body also. When you look at the Heat Centers right now, Bam, really is, I've spoken about. <laughs> Bam, is, Bam is sort of a power forward, so right. he's not a true center. Thomas Bryant really is more of a four than a five. He's not yes. a center. God bless Orlando Robinson, but he's still in the fight. So you know what? I would take Nurkic, and then I'd say, you know what? You're taking all three players from pot A. You're taking Robinson, you're taking Hero, and you're taking Kyle Lowry. You know what? You're only getting one player from pot B, and we're going to tell you who you're taking, and maybe you're only getting one draft choice then. I wouldn't have an issue with that, because okay. while you're taking on Jurkic's salary, you're then losing Duncan Robbins' salary for the same time. That's sort of a wash. Then you go out and you go, hello, Danny Green. We know you're old, but we know you still can shoot. We're going to sign you for the minimum. Hop aboard. And you still can find Javante Green, other players to beat your shooters, and work around it that way. So. Nurkic isn't a deal breaker in my perspective. Okay. All right. I love it then because I, I thought, and, <laughs> and, and, and it's exactly what I thought that if you take that salary on, you save yourself getting hit on all the young guys. Now you give up less of young guys. So sure. we agree. We kind of, okay, we're, we're on the same page. All right. So apparently Orlando Robinson, uh, I watched it uh, the other night and uh, the other big O in town blew up 36 points. 11 rebounds, four assistances, two blocks. He shot three of four from three-point range. So, uh, and and from what I understand, Bam has kind of been uh, the guy that's taken him under his wing, right? Yeah, you know, Bam, Bam likes him. I'm still not sold that he's ready because, again, Big O, you were out here last year. Summer League is still Summer League. But right. as an ongoing project, I have no issue with Orlando Robinson. And what I think I would do is this. If the Nurkic deal comes through and you wind up with Bam, Nurkic, and Thomas Robinson as your centers, I might put Orlando Robinson back on a two-way contract. Keep him under my purview. Still have him belonging to the team. We can play him up to 50 games. Give him another season. Thomas Bryant is on a one-year deal with a player option after. You can move off of that. Or honestly, if Nurkic doesn't work out, you can put him into a trade and make that money work down the road. So I like him in their orbit. I need to see a little bit more. I'm not sure he's a component for Bam Adebayo, but you know what? I would not have any issue if Bam misses, let's say, eight to ten games next season. 
to start Orlando Robinson, get him in his foul trouble, so what, and have him play those games. It's just another guy that's on the Heat development program. Might take a little bit longer, but there was nothing about that game when you watched it on Thursday that didn't say, tell you anything but, hey, this guy could be something. Let's keep the work going. Okay, so here's my question. If Bam is mentoring him, can Orlando mentor Bam on three-point shooting? <laughs> you know what? It's interesting. I'm going to go away from you on this, and I know where you're going. That today's modern center has to have range and open the defense. But here's the deal. He is still Ira, a small team. Ira, I'm deep so down inside. Ira, hold on. Deep down inside, we're all pissed off because we all know Bam has the stroke. We all know Bam has the ability that if he felt like it, he could drown you with 16 footers. And if he felt like it, he put it on the on the on the floor and dunk on your ass. And if he damn felt like it, he could learn how to be one hell of a three point shooter. That's the only reason if Bam was a goofball and didn't look good and was an awkward shot or all that kind of stuff, then we could all understand it. But because he's so fluid, because he looks so damn good, it's it's I'm watching Orlando Robinson. I'm going, dude, how come Bam can't do this? Why can't he shoot from three? Because, uh, dude, I was very impressed with Orlando Robinson shooting threes. He looked comfortable, Ira, shooting those threes. He did. I'm still not sure. The point I was trying to make, I want Bam floating on the perimeter on offense if I'm going to remain a smallish team. That's the problem. Is I still think you need the offensive board. You need someone playing closer to the rim. He really don't have a post-up guy. Jimmy posts up a little bit. But I'm, I'm just not so sure. It, it's bad enough that Bam is chasing guards on the defensive ends and switching everything. So, yes, could he do it? Sure. Does he have the stroke to do it? Absolutely. Could it be another weapon in his arsenal? No question. But you know what? If I'm a small team and I'm playing him with a Caleb Martin at the four, for example, I think I'd rather keep him a little bit closer to the rim if I could on both ends because this he team, even with Damian Lillard, still will be height challenged. So I think you have to look at it that way. Could he do it? Sure. Might it be an interesting novelty? Absolutely. But Bam Adebayo hanging out in the corner on offense, man, you are really small and you ain't getting no offensive rebounds. By the way, you've mentioned them a couple times. Your boy, Drew Smith, he had a little too many uh, turnovers, but he he played a solid game uh, the other night on Saturday. Yeah, and the thing is, if the Heat trade both Hero and La, they don't have a single point guard on the roster beyond Damian Lillard, and you're going to need cheap help. So even on his two-way, he can contribute there. But that's the thing is, you know, and it's interesting because the best option to point guard arguably right now on the market would be Goran Dragic and Kendrick Nunn. So you might see a Heat alumni tour through Smith coming back, whether it's Dragic, whether it's Kendrick Nunn, because if you ship out Tyler Hero and Kyle Lowry, you're going to have to sign at least one more point guard. But it will be nice to have the security of a Drew Smith knowing, hey, on a two-way contract, you can still give us 50 games if we need it. Uh, let me ask you, what do you think about my boy Jamal Cain? I, I've been a Jamal Cain fan since last uh, summer league. Uh, what do you think about the kid? Have you seen any improvement in him so far? Yeah, I mean, I like his athleticism. I think he's, you know, at worst, I think he'll wind up in a two-way contract. I think he could get what Orlando Robinson has, which is a standard deal with a limited guarantee, depending on how the Heat go with our roster. Here's the deal, Big O. We just mentioned it looks like a Lillard trade could send out multiple players for a single player. You will have roster spots to fill. I like him. I need to see more of a consistent three-point shot because you know who he is? And it's funny because this guy was actually watching from courtside the other day and I spoke to him. I want him to become Keith Askin. I want him to become good enough at the corner three that he's a threat. And I want him to D up so Jimmy Butler doesn't have to be the only defensive perimeter guy. Maybe Josh Richardson a little also. So I think I, what I want to see from Jamal Cain, the remainder of these summer league games, at least four more games here in Vegas, is start stroking the three. Make yourself a threat that other teams have to guard. If he can become a three and D player, yeah, I think he can easily extend his heat playing future. I don't know if you know something that you can say or you can't say about this guy, but I'm confused as hell. 
Why the hell is Christian Wood still out there? I think he has a world of talent. I think if he was in the in a heat uniform, he would play terrific basketball. And he's like considered like a bottom ringer guy in your roster. What has Christian Wood done behind the scenes that he possesses talent but is not appreciated apparently? Doesn't play a lick of defense and doesn't seem motivated to play defense, has shown some dog in his game to get him to practice and work hard, sort of everything that a Heat player isn't big of. Is, and other right. teams have noticed it also. There was a really good stat last year that when Christian Wood played um, over 20 minutes a game, Dallas like only won like 20% of those games. He actually hurt the Mavericks when he was on the court. I agree with you. What I saw from him early in his career, even yeah. a little bit in Houston as well, there is something there. So here's the question. If you bring him into the Miami Heat, do you do what you did with Anthony Mason and so many other players and you resurrect? Or does he pollute your locker room? I think that's why teams are holding off. And here's the deal, Big O. It's not just a Heat thing. Any team in the NBA, probably for the minimum, could have signed Christian Wood by now. Yeah. But yeah. Happened. So it's not just the Heat. It's the other teams also. You know what? When you get the tag of being a dog in this league, right, not right. a lot of teams like the Heat are willing to take a chance. I think that's the problem right now. I don't know if the Heat, with so many young players, if they keep Jovic, if they keep Hawkins, if they keep Kane, if they keep Robinson, want that kind of element in their locker room as well. It's a shame because he has skills. He's yes. probably as skilled as any he, he big man would be outside of Bam. But it's the other part of the equation. No, and I know it has nothing to do with the heat. That's why I started the question with what's the dirt? What's right. going on? Because you can't be this God given gifted and then yeah. you're just like cast it aside like you're nothing, bro. You're being treated like you're Hassan Whiteside. That's how you're being treated. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like and that's, you're, that's, not, you're a guy you know, that you're not taking serious. That's that's Christian Wood. And You're not being taken serious, dude. And someone gave me that exact name, so that's a very good name for you to draw on that because that's what they're saying. It's another Assange. So you know what? If you're a bad team and you need numbers because you got to fill a box score, you add guys like that. But when the Heat got back into championship mode, Hassan Whiteside was the first guy that shipped out because you don't want to do that in your locker room. You don't right. want to have a guy who grabs the box score first and looks at his numbers instead of if the team won. It's a shame, but I think it's very telling that here we are approaching mid-July and Christian Wood, even at the minimum, hasn't signed anywhere. You're spot on on that. It is criminal that that guy is wasting his talent because the Lord gave him some serious gifts, and he is absolutely totally. ruining it, dude. What a, what a sh I knew I knew there was some going on because – there, there's no way you can have that kind of talent. You're just sitting there at this point in the offseason. Yeah. All right, what do you got going on the Sun Sentinel so folks can check you out? Well, you know what, Big O? The, the, he still have two open roster spots. And like I mentioned, if they make a Lillard deal, they'll probably have three, maybe four open roster spots. So I listed everyone who's available, and I had some fun with it. There actually is a complete Miami Heat reunion roster you could bring back. There are guys out there like Goran Dragic, Kendrick Nunn, Derek Jones Jr., Marquise Morris, and the list goes on. Hell, Casey Akpal is out there. And here in Las Vegas, Dion Waiters is doing tryouts, trying to get back into the league. So basically, beyond that also, I listed all the possibilities. If he needs another point guard, here are the options out there. If they want another power player, there are some quality power players out there. Right now, there are two open roster spots. The question becomes, or did he do it internally? Do they keep guys from their summer league team? Does Jamal Kane get a standard contract? Is Drew Smith get change from his two-way deal? Does Drew Peterson, the USC undrafted forward three-point shooter who has started every summer league game for the Heat get a chance? So it's going to be interesting to see how they fill out the roster. There's menu A without Lillard. There's menu B with Lillard. But the Heat still have three or four openings. So they're still going to be keeping an eye on the market. And there's going to be tryouts probably throughout the balance of the summer. All right. Good stuff. Follow him on Twitter. At Ira Heat Beat, and make sure you subscribe to the Sun, Sun Sentinel like I and many others do. Ira, enjoy Vegas. We'll catch up later in the week, my friend. All right, we'll catch you next time with video also. Thank you, Big O.
You got it. Thank you. There you go. Ira Winderman. Hopefully next week he'll have some video. That is your Acura of Pembroke Pines, Miami Heat, and NBA report.